Hi, I'm Darren Janeski with Big Round Wheel Amusements. Today, we're in Orlando, Florida at the IAPA 2024 show, and we're gonna check out what's new in the world of amusements. IAPA was founded in 1918, and I think it brings together over 35,000 industry professionals to the amusement industry here in Orlando, and uh, they represent over 100 different countries. We're here on day one. It's four days. Each day runs roughly 10 to 6 with Friday 10 to 4. So it's a lot of opportunity. Literally, there's miles of exhibit area to look at, and um, We've been here last few years. We haven't been able to make it just because we've been so busy. This year, we made it a point to be here. Uh, it's almost like you can't afford to not um, go too long and you start missing out on, on what's available. There's a lot of resources. We're here to get some, maybe some insurance quotes and see what's out there for our business. Also some safety consulting. We're interested in that too. And, um, we want to look at what Bob Space Racers has for game trailers. Um, possibly interested in maybe a new game trailer, uh, maybe a water gun fun for our business. That would be maybe a step in the right direction for our game department and see what we can uh, find out about it. If you're just tuning in today to watch our IAPA video, you should check out our channel. We have a variety of different amusement ride setups where we go on site and we set up amusement rides. We cover everything from safety, assembly, to operation. So check us out, Big Round Wheel Amusements. A little more about our company. We're based in South Carolina and we provide rental services with amusement rides. So we take our equipment all over the country and mainly corporate clients. We set things up for family days. I think we have about 15 different rides and then we have maybe six different games that we bring out. And um, this is stuff that we do not carnival related, but yet we, we come out and we, we make a carnival experience for our clients. So it's typically larger events where the client wants to bring amusement rides into their event they just don't want small equipment, they want the bigger stuff. So we try to handle the, the bigger equipment, bumper cars. We have a lot of larger rides, large Ferris wheels. We have three different Ferris wheels that we rent out. That's probably our number one item. And um, what's unique about us is we do cover the entire United States. So we're bringing rides to places that don't have them traveling, a lot of trucking, a lot of traveling. That's what we specialize in. Often we'll go places where we have to fly back and forth to go get more equipment. And uh, there's a lot of logistics involved in our business. Our clients also expect a really high level of quality and safety with their rides. So a lot of big brands, a lot of big names that we represent. So professionalism is very important and we strive every event to make it perfect and fun for everyone. Uh, there's a lot of communication involved in our business in bringing this equipment in, load in, planning, and um, it just, it, it's never easy. So that's what we do. We also can rent anywhere in the world. So we can put our equipment in cargo planes. We could put it on cargo ships and ship it out and fly out and take delivery at the port set up a ride in another country and then bring it back to the United States. So logistics, 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 that's what we do.
？哪一个？是一百一的。This one. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking for a light for some of our equipment that you can upgrade. A lot of lights now are 24 volt, so you need a transformer. Um, the good thing about this light here that I'm seeing is it runs on 110, and it has still has a flash pattern. So it's kind of hard to find. So you could have a ride that has steady power to the lighting without a flash, and you want to change the bulbs out and make it into a flashing. Um, this is a, there's, there's a one through 16. So each light is programmed one through 16. So you'll get a chase pattern that comes in and all kinds of patterns. These lights use the, the sine wave of the AC signal to calibrate themselves and um, it's really kind of valuable for us because we've got some older rides and we'd like to be able to put these uh, new LED bulbs in. So this is a good, uh, this is a good, uh, good option for us. They got a lot of different varieties of lights here. It's a uh, glare amusement lamp manufacturing and that would be in China, China. right? China. All right. So good deal on these bulbs. Uh, lots of light comes out of something like this, so um, this is a this is a good resource for us to be able to know about these things. In a cavity, where uh, you'll have some space here, and then we pour the material in this way. Um, it's an open cast method; it's not like vacuum made or anything. Uh, and then we machine like the finish. These have uh, concave finishes, maybe cleaned up on the side, that kind of thing. Typically, overcast a little bit too. That way we can... We're looking for some wheels. Um, Relining the wheels on our coaster. We're wondering what the What the options are and what the materials uh, In comparison to what we have we've got a, a coaster that we've only had for a short time But we're starting to notice that we're getting a little bit of uh, cracking and some different things that I'm concerned with seems like I think the coaster was built a few years before we received it and it, and it may be sat around and I feel like I'm going to be needing some, some wheels soon. So the first couple of things that you're triggering for me with the cracking, um, if you have cracking going perpendicular to the running surface, that's never a good, th good sign. If you have it going in the same direction as the running surface, that's okay, depending on the depth. Okay. If you can stick your fingernail in there, not good. But if you can just visually see some cracking, that doesn't mean necessarily needs to come off. Uh -huh. The other thing you mentioned, though, um, about it sitting for a while is you probably have some flat spots. Sometimes clients can run their train and run that flat spot out. You won't hear that thump, 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 thump. Yeah. Yeah. But um, if you're not able to do that, it's probably time to go ahead and get them recovered. So we can bring your wheels in. We can evaluate the current material that you're, that's on there. What I typically would ask is if it's performing well, let's not change anything. But if it's a new ride to you, I can work with the manufacturer. I can work with our material supplier and try to identify um, a material that you're going to get the best wear out of. Um, pigment doesn't affect anything and I always recommend even though you see these show pieces and colors I recommend staying natural that way you can see through the material you can start to see any kind of defects see any that makes sense. premature failure you just take a flashlight to it yeah um, yeah my 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 concerns are very superficial it's just I can visually see a little bit so I guess that could be well, normal your concerns are valid um, you that's what you want to be looking for is any kind of change in that cover material and then just making sure that 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 change is something that can stay into service or if it's one of those premature failure triggers I mean ultimately it is going to fail you just want to see how and how long you could get and of course extend the life of that that wheel covering so what we could do for you, you could send in a couple of sample wheels we'll do some evaluation for you we can even do some um, linings that you can put back on the ride Wow just let it run compared to what you already have and yeah. What you like. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to see a different product in contrast with what we've got what to, to know. Have. That's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. So a wheel like this wheel right here, mm -hmm. if I was Six Flags or Disney World and I am running the life out of these things, mm -hmm. how long does a, a, a urethane wheel last typically with the big great, people? Great question. Super hard to answer. Um, so we've had in, wheels in service, let's say like on Haunted Mansion for decades. They wow. just 
same wheel. Yeah. But that's not picking. a very dynamic ride. So now you go uh, to fine. maybe a Batman over at Six Flags. They're rotating their wheels usually every season. Not necessarily that it has um, extended its life, but they want to go ahead and get those reworked before they get into their season. That way you don't have a wheel come out in the middle of operation. That's right. Ideally. So um, it really just depends. Some of my clients are cycling once a year. Some of them are cycling in the beginning of the season and then they're rotating their spares out mid-season. Okay. It really just depends. So a lot of the big people are saying, I'm not going to accept failure. I'm just going to freshen this stuff up and I'm going to eliminate that part of my maintenance. It's right. Keeping it fresh, which is probably really It depends good on how the budgets work too. Sometimes they have all that budget at the beginning of the year, they got to use it up or um, right. again, they just don't want to cycle in the middle of the season. So what is your season run? We're running probably about 10, 10 months out of the year. Okay. Yeah. So um, you, it's quite possible um, you'd be able to get two or three years life out of your wheel. It really just depends on how dynamic of material we put on there. Um, and some of that's just a little bit of trial and error to see what you like. Hmm. That's good. So you can get this stuff in any color you want. So any if you color, have a specific yeah. ride that needs black wheels or mm -hmm. purple or something, mm -hmm. you can actually match these wheels mm -hmm. to the ride. Absolutely. There, it's um, You can compare it almost like food coloring. So it's pigment that's put in there. It's completely cosmetic. Some clients like to coordinate the color with the ride. Um, some clients are doing a test wheel, so they want to have that marked out, marked differently, so it's easy for identification. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and then I, always, like I said, I recommend a lot of my clients just to go with natural, so you're able to see um, anything that's going on in that material. Huh. That's pretty good. So you this have, is uh, Ma Macklin polyurethane and so rubber Macklin products. Macklin polyurethane and rubber products, a family business. We're right here in um, Lakeland, about uh, 45 minutes west of here. Yep. Um, been doing this for 50 years. My father and grandfather started the business. Wow. And now we've got the next generation coming up. Family so business. That's what we like. We yeah, like family. You guys are family business. Absolutely. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this is some good looking stuff. Um, I like the shine. I like the feel of this material. It just feels like it's, uh, it's durable. I've seen other wheels um, on rides and they, they didn't look as, as finished, finished off and as off. nice. Yeah. So one other thing I did want to point out to you, um, as you get down the road, so you'll hear this term of five times reline and then you have to buy a new hub. Wow. So what that will refer to is as we take off the old material, you can start to wear down the metal on the hub yeah. and it'll come out of tolerance from the OEM spec. Uh -huh. That's why you'd have to buy a new wheel. Okay. Macklin has a different refurbishing process. So we use heat to remove the liner, which wow. doesn't affect the aluminum. Keep in mind, you want to make sure your bearing bores stay within tolerance. Every right. time you push that bearing in and out, you are going to modify um, That's right. that right. Yeah, bore. yeah, yeah. So with us, you can reline as many times as long as your bore is in tolerance. That's so pretty good. it can good. save you costs on hub down the road. Yeah, that's fantastic. I yeah. like it. Yeah, good, good, uh, good options for us for sure. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, Aaron. hopefully we'll do something soon. Absolutely. Thank nice you. to meet you. Insurance. Yeah. You guys sell insurance for amusement yeah. rides? We do. All right. Um, we've got a rental business. Um, we set up rides all over the country, and uh, we're always interested in knowing what's out there for insurance uh, coverage and equipment liability. I mean, nobody wants to deal with insurance until they have to. That's right. And and unfortunately, with your guys' space, there's not too many insurance markets that are available. But we have access to everyone around the country. Doesn't matter the state is. We have got coverage for them, and it could range from your backyard games to inflatables to full gone uh, mechanical rides um, up to fixed locations as well, amusement parks and everything else. Okay. So so you do uh, in within the rental industry. Yeah. So OBD Insurance now. Uh, from our understanding, what we've heard is the largest amusement rental company, insurance company in the nation now. Ah. So uh, we big dive into that space and it's, it's a big world for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good to know, good to know. Um, the, the policies, you can do single ride, multi-ride, uh, somebody that's got a small business can go to yeah, you Yeah, so we can go to, from your mom and pop just to the 
weekend warriors to people that are full time and really big operations. It doesn't matter if you got a single ride or you want the full blown policy for general liability yeah. or just a special events policy. We also have the capabilities of workers comp, auto, property in the Marine. We're all in one shop and we can take it even further for the bigger operations. We can do the health insurance as well. Okay, okay. Um, the policies that you offer for general liability for amusements, is that like auditable policies? Do you have non-auditable as well? We've got both options depending on the carriers. Okay. So they can be auditable, non-auditable, claims made per occurrence. Most of them start with a 1 million, 2 million aggregate. Yep. Uh, but we can morph them to be how you want. So it could be a 1 million five, or we can go on the umbrellas on top to make it two, three, four, five, whatever you need. Interesting. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to keep this card and we will likely contact you. I love to know what, what pricing's out there. Perfect. Thank Good you. Good to meet you, Derek. OVD Insurance. OVD Thank Insurance. You. Kyle and Luke. Luke. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank appreciate you guys. it. Thank you. All right, enjoy yourself. How are you? Student, are you a member of ACE? Um, not ACE. Okay. That's amazing. Do you know about American Coaster Enthusiasts? I don't. So this is a group of people who love riding roller coasters. Really? Travel around the country, we have events. We work with parks to provide like riders for media days. Or, well, it's a good group of people. We just ride around, you know, go around different places and ride roller coasters. Wow. Have a coaster con every summer for six days. Or we, really? This last summer we were in Northern California. So we rode at uh, Santa Cruz and uh, Great America. And, uh, wow. That's pretty good, yeah. One more part. So how many people are involved in this? About 7,000 total. 7,000 people? Yeah, we had a little about 1,000 for our, uh, <laughs> our uh, coaster con this year. It was 1,500 last year. We were got Dollywood and Carowinds. Really? That's incredible. So that's, it's a, and this is one of our members just created this coaster for our booth. To, but it has all the blocks and the braking. And all. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of automation going on with this. Yeah, this is impressive. Occasionally, you get the same problems. You, you know. I have figured out how to e-stop and un -e stop So, so 3D uh, printing, it's so smooth. It's amazing that... Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I know the track came from Coaster Dynamics. Ah. So I'm thinking that's a, a set you could probably buy. But then he took that and modified it. Yeah. I like hearing that. You can dispatch another one if you want to hit the green button over there. So, very much... Very authentic. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a real uh, dispatch booth, you know, control. Oh, really? Oh, well, that was such a nice surprise. Well, Next coaster goes into line, waiting. Yeah. You can dispatch it as soon as it goes wow. over the hill. Although if it, uh, oh, yeah, you got a sensor there. Sensor there, so as soon as it's... So... I have to watch if the, you know, that one made it so really? good. Wow. It occasionally derails right there, so I have to watch. It's got high output, too. We that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So these are the people from the, the Deal Exposition out in Dubai, and this is actually where we're going to be exhibiting uh, this year. Um, doing booth selection, we're gonna figure out what booth we're gonna get. We're hoping for a corner booth, and this is Frida from the Deal Exhibition, and um, maybe Frida's gonna find us a corner booth. That's what we want. Okay, let's we'll see. Okay, because from the floor plan, one of the biggest issues that I see about buying a new ride lately is many of the manufacturers are very backed up. So one of the, the concerns that I have is you obviously have to put some money down to get yourself in, in place. And I've heard of it being five years before you could see your ride. So how in the world do you forecast what, what 
what the economic client uh, is is going to be doing in in five years from now. Like I wanted a Ferris wheel now, and I get it in twenty twenty nine. Uh, that's not necessarily the case here, but uh, others. So I guess we could talk to these people and see what their lead time is if you wanted to buy a Ferris wheel. How long does it take and what do they offer? Uh, mobile Ferris wheel, um, always looking to be single trailer if possible because when you get into multi-loads, I think it's a little bit beyond what the rental market is supporting right now. So a single trailer Ferris wheel. Maybe a, it looks like they have a 20 meter and a 25, but I don't know that these are mobile. Fine after I after I got it, but these guys, because I was looking here for us the 22, the 20, yeah. 20, it's progressed a lot. Bobby DeStefano was sitting over there. Oh really? He, That's... Um, he actually said he fronted them money in the beginning to create the first 20 meter meal. Really? So his, they've progressed a lot since then because the original one's a little hard to uh, move. You know, it takes some time. It took them two days to one time. So now they have a crane inside and they have a whole video. It's a whole different ball game. I had a crane put on mine and it's, it's useless. It doesn't have it doesn't have a winch on the crane. So you're using a knuckle boom to try to pick up the gondolas. But the problem is the amount of manipulation that you need to get a knuckle boom to go up. You know, you're constantly having to boom out and change your, you're, you're sitting there with the crane forever just to get a gondola off. Also a tractor, like that, do it. Uh, I had it down like three hours and 15 minutes, but I think this will kind of a lot of that off of it. Ours, to take it down, you're looking at about eight hours. Well, and we, uh, I, what I did, I left the bridge permanent on the trailer. So instead, everybody mounts the station, and I didn't mount the station. I, I, I mounted the hill, and it passes under the station, and then it oh. turns sideways. Really? Meets, meets under it. I, made I would love stand. to see that, yeah. Instead of the jack stands being like that, yep. I made one jack stand that's Y-shaped on each end, so the cars line up and they clear this area here. So this is Fun and Fun Toys. Uh, we purchase prizes from them. Uh, they're located in Houston, Texas, and they've got a lot of good selection. We're going to see what they got. Sloth. Sloth? It's a magic sloth. Look. You can, you can. Look. How does he hold on to you? Yeah, he's new. His claws. Look. That's all right. You don't care. Look here. Huh. Yes, you can do. No problem. And he'll stay. Yeah. That's good. Sloth that won't leave. They have a different model. What else you got? Capybara. We're looking for a capybara. Oh. There's a capybara in our commercial, okay. and we're looking for a capybara. Uh, How do you find a capybara? Oh. Capybara. Oh. Here. 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 Ah. Hello, capybara. Capybara. Yes. All kinds. Looks almost like a, a beaver or something. So a lot of the events that we do, of course, they're paid events. So you're bringing game trailers in and, you know, if you do unlimited prizes, it gets quite involved. Uh, literally, you can go through a, a box of of plush prizes in three or four minutes. Uh, people will keep playing and playing. Uh, we, we go with a lot of different schemes on how we're going to distribute the prizes and the gameplay. So some clients, they want everybody to play free. Well, you're gonna go with probably something much smaller down here. 
here they charge 85 cents for this and that's pretty affordable so you could get a lot of prizes a lot of gameplay you also have to factor in how many attendees how many people are are, are going to be there playing the games uh typically when we do it we try to go with something right in this range right here because you're going to have a corporate client maybe they're doing a family day and their employees are very very important to them they want them to have something nice so we'll usually try to do this and we'll usually try to let the lines for the games distribute the prizes so uh the game can only play so fast that's kind of what's nice about water gun fun is you don't go through a lot of prizes each game has one winner so you know basically how many prizes you're going to use per hour and it's very easy to have a nicer prize something larger um, and then if we do a, maybe a paid event where we go out and do something we don't normally do um, there's a variety of different sizes that you're going to use for stuff like that but again we're mostly rental so um, uh, lots of different sizes of prize work for us So very much a twin to, to our water gun fun. Yeah. Nearly everything's the same on that one. But uh, this one here looks good to me. This one's interesting. So I'm going to look at it. What I like about this is we have a marquee on ours and this one is the clamshell so it opens up and you don't have to go up and put the marquee up. You just got some flags that are up there which is great and the marquee is kind of on the inside of the game. Uh, it's 10 station. I believe ours is an 11. Uh, rental market so it's not a huge deal on the output there'd be plenty of time for people to play on a rental comes in it it passes the station and uses the the grade to slow it down that's extremely efficient smart then you've got something that all you have to do is just reposition it so you're not doing any heavy braking with the unit and that that's saving centers yeah 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 that's super smart that's very efficient it's like like the bottom two that have the brakes on the uh, gearbox wow and that is the, the brakes can be troublesome and by reducing the number of brakes is good mine the whole hill has brakes on everything and they can be problems
There are so many things to see here at IAPA. Um, we've been walking around all day and we haven't even touched the surface. So many different industries represented. There are um, inflatables, there's water park, a uh, little bit of food service. So you, you can never really see it all. So on day one, uh, I think we've accomplished quite a bit, but um, there's just so much more walking we can do. We do plan on coming back uh, for probably a day two and a day three, and uh, we're gonna check out some other uh, attractions while we're here in Orlando, and that's always fun. So um, we'll look at some more. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we sure would appreciate it. Um, it helps keep the channel going, helps keep us uh, coming up in searches on YouTube, and you get to see how we set up many of our amusement rides and how we travel with them. So subscribe, Big Round Wheel Amusements. The great Zolt are here. Listen to this. This is the Another popular market here at IAPA is the family entertainment center slash arcade industry. They've got a lot of equipment here, uh, a lot of things to look at. Doesn't really pertain to our business, but it's amazing to see what technology brings around. Is the ball broken or was that too? There's also a whole area dedicated to water parks and outdoor water activities and uh, it's pretty impressive to walk through here too.
So overall, um, I think IAPA 2024 did us really well. Uh, we, we made a lot of connections, uh, got the things exactly what we came here for and more. We're able to talk to a lot of different vendors, see some new technology, some lighting, some ideas for some of our rides to maybe change some lighting, made some connections there, and uh, accomplished quite a bit. There's a lot of new technology out in the market out here, and uh, it, it, never, it never fails to impress me with what people are doing. And who is out there selling what new gadget or um, something to, to make things better for everybody, the people that ride the rides, the people that own the rides, so on and so forth. And it keeps us where we need to be in the industry. So I'm, uh, I'm very pleased that, that we're able to get here this year. Some of the things that we uh, did was we talked with uh, a vendor about the possibly upgrading our water gun fun trailer. Uh, we're working on that and see if uh, that might be an option, something we're moving towards. And um, I think we're going to be doing a few new setup videos for a couple of rides that we may be moving into our inventory. Um, came, a lot of it came from this show. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming up very soon. We're going to get some new ride setups, some, uh, a few surprises that uh, we didn't even know we were going to be looking into. And uh, we think we did good. We did great. Appreciate everyone who watches our channel. There were so many people here who recognized us and stopped by to say hello. It really means a lot to us to be putting all this into the, the channel and the ride setups and to see people that, that know of our channel and, and like what we do. So we got a lot of really positive feedback and it, it makes me want to do more videos. So um, we'll be going out of our way to come up with some new videos and give you guys some more content to, uh, to watch. So enjoy every bit of it.